Nintendo dropped all sorts of new details on their upcoming Labo creation kits via three trailers chock full of info and interesting visuals. What's going on everybody? It's Zach from Switch Force. Gabe is here and we are ready to talk cardboard because they dived into all the details I think that we wanted to know. Yeah, a lot of information here, and honestly, this makes me a little bit more excited about Labo because, you know, once the excitement of the original announcement and how, like, unique the idea was, I kind of forgot about it. But this definitely brings a little bit more hype to it, even though it's not necessarily catered to me. I can't wait to try these things out for myself. Absolutely, and I think there's one of the packs that is, for me, far more interesting than the other, but we'll get to that in a moment. Um, I think I think that the, the, the first stuff to talk about is that they detailed all of the different activities. Uh, Toy-Con Robot is made up of a number of modes. Um, there is the Hangar, Robo Studio versus Robot Challenge and Calories, and then the uh, Toy-Con Variety Pack is RC Car Fishing, Aquarium, House, Circuit, Stadium, Toy Piano, and Studio, along with the Garage. Now, I want to start with the Garage because that's something we didn't really know much about beforehand, and we can get into some of the the details on the individual toy con but garage is this mode where you can kind of make your own toy con they advertise it as like creating your own riffs on what they have already included for you but at the same time they showed off things that were, were very different they talked about like you can sort of set up these input outputs via simple coding um, they showed a bank they showed a guitar they showed this falling guy game where the as the guy fell, it like recognized when he hit the ground. Um, it recognized the difference between a dime and a quarter. And some seem to have like pre-built screens, like the guitar as they were strumming the guitar. Um, there were like different waveforms, and with the falling guy game, it said hit on the screen when he hit. The bank though looked like someone just like drew on a piece of paper and taped it over the switch, which is a little odd. But all in all, like that's kind of fascinating. I wonder how far that goes. Yeah, I mean, it's good to have the possibility for all this creativity. I do wonder, like, if that's going to be, like, a little too complicated for the age range that they're going for. And that's a sentiment that, like, carried over to a lot of these things. Some of these things do seem hmm. pretty complex. And yeah. probably not complex for us. But, again, I'm thinking specifically the demographic that they're going for. Will they be able to have a good time with this? Yeah. I mean, I think the potential to build your own is exciting. I wonder how much guidance there is there or how many examples there are. If the, the manual included um, is going to be detailed, they did show that there's a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff um, in these Labo games. So you can see the inner workings of the, the Labo, the Toy-Con themselves. You can look and, and figure out exactly where all the moving parts are and exactly how it's working. They show that you can see the IR vision of the RC car on your Switch if you so desire. And you also can watch videos on how to build them, how to put them together. Um, Maybe they do really uh, have a bigger emphasis on teaching, on, on science-y building and creation than we initially expected, um, because I was surprised to see so much back-end stuff. But like you mentioned, is, is this is this right for 10-year-olds? I think just stuff like Lego Mindstorms, Capsilla, stuff that I played with when I was little, it wasn't like that stuff was, was dumbed down for kids. It was just targeting a, a demographic of, of children that were excited and interested and engaged with building, creating, science, engineering, um, that sort of thing. And, and maybe Labo's appeal lies more with, with a educationally motivated gamer than just a gaming-motivated gamer. When press recently got their hands on Labo, that was one of their big takeaways, that this is, like, really educational stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Some of the previews made note of that, that, like, Nintendo found a way to make education fun with this, and now I know what they mean. Because before I had no idea, because I thought it was just like, hey, you're driving an RC car around and you're fishing. I don't see the educational value in that. But now that we see how intricate it can get, uh, I'm 100% on board with it. Uh, Zach, I was wondering if you maybe want to go through these Toy-Con uh, activities one by one and just overall what we think of it now that we know more details you mentioned the rc car so maybe we can start there yeah we got to see a little bit of the ui as well i think it's a pretty cool and cute uh, interface it definitely has a very uh, papery uh, materially feel um i do think the colorful innocent presentation betrays a little bit of the complexity that's there especially when you get down to the end of the line uh, like at the the piano studio man you know, you mentioned complicated for kids. I think that's complicated even for adults. Cutting your own waveforms, making your own pattern cards. These are things that are really cool to see how deep some of these activities can go. But at the same time, like, 
I don't know if I can cut a freaking pattern card. <laughs> I don't know that I can I can make a waveform. Well, you um, can. Well, here's the thing about that. You can cut a waveform. You're not going to know what the waveform is, but you can yeah, definitely. I'm not going to make some beautiful. Yeah, you can definitely you know, just Mozart. cut like, you know, little like triangle pieces out of the paper and boom, you have a waveform. You just don't know what it's going to sound like. Yeah, there you go. Good point. All right. So RC car, um, to me, the most interesting takeaways there are the fact that it does show you the the vision uh, the, the perspective of the car and you can see what it's seen. And also that battle idea of putting the two cars in the arena and seeing who can push the other, um, out first. I, I feel like a lot of this is going to carry beyond the game itself and kind of make your own fun, right? I could see people making their own obstacle courses with the RC cars, making their own sort of arena style battler. And I think the same could be said from, for a number of the other modes, um, of kind of like creating beyond what is presented. And maybe that's where garage really, really plays in as well yeah i think with rc car we had an idea of what it was and this was a pretty good idea uh, besides the fact that yeah you can make a little battle cars it, it's pretty cookie cutter uh, other than the fact that you can see the as you mentioned like the little like science behind it where uh, you can see the little camera and, and how the vibrations are working and things like that so i think rc car we knew enough about it that we made a pretty good judgment call uh fishing though zach you can make your own fish what do you feel like? <laughs> how like, cool is that Dude, Nintendo has been hanging out with Warren Spector or something. They got some Spore vibes here. Uh, that was kind of cool. I mean, I think the the fishing mode is more interesting than the aquarium mode. To me, that looks to be the... I think it might be the weakest of the activities. I, I wonder just in general, you know, Wii Sports, it was a very simple game. The tennis mode is very simple, yet that was fun over and over again for so many people. And I don't know if... We, we polled everyone if that's because of just like the, the multiplayer camaraderie, if it's because of the physical activity, if it's because just it's inherently exciting to fling a racket and see something happen on screen. I wonder if any of these simple activities end up having that long-term appeal, unpredictably, but, but end up giving us sort of like a, a recurring dopamine hit, even though they are sort of at, at first blush, like, oh, it's a really basic idea. I, I really don't think this is made for that. Uh, you know, and you also got to remember at that time the novelty of motion, motion for the first yeah. time. That's something that's completely gone now. I, I don't think any of this does that. Yeah. Well, that's fishing in aquarium. Make your own fish. Uh, you know, you can kind of go through different. They show depths of the sea and find different species, and you know, probably be cool the first time you feel uh, the feedback on that fishing rod. I don't know. To me, that that looks the most kitschy and gimmicky of all. What did you think about home, Gabe, and the strange cat elephant creature that resides inside? <laughs> I mean, my first thought is, why are we being mean to this thing? Like, they, they incentivize pranking him. That's kind of your thing. <laughs> you can, like, stick little cardboard in, in, in a slot that they have there, and you can, like, fill his apartment with water, which is not nice. And I mean, he seemed to have fun. He's floating around. Yeah, sure, but imagine if someone just filled your apartment with water. You wouldn't like that very much. <laughs> Rings real true to you, Gabe, with your new apartment, huh? Yeah. Um, to me, this is the weakest. Honestly, I think I would like the, the fishing one more because there's like fishing mini games where, hey, catch a bigger fish. I don't know. I'm one of those people that might sit there for like an hour or two just trying to catch a bigger fish. Uh, with the with the home one, the house one, I don't know what there is for me there, but that's just me. I think the cool part of the the home uh, is the fact or the house that there's things to uncover. It looked like there were a lot of secret rooms and maybe even secret activities. They show a little bowling mini game, a little minecart activity. Um, to me, that one was clever because it is going to encourage uh, experimentation. You know, I'm sure there will be some cool fish that you can find or maybe some Nintendo references deep at the bottom. But I think the home and the house is where kind of the most exploratory and the most childlike wonder comes in because it seems like you will be able to create interesting reactions with the creature, like you mentioned, and also discover uh, maybe some hidden toys slash games slash instances um but but once you do is there any replayability in that i don't know it, it that one seems like the the youngest demographic to me yeah like it's targeting 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 the most uh the most the smallest of children uh this is where i think toy con wins and that is in circuit and stadium modes which is the motorbike it basically looks like mario kart or we kart me kart you can make your own circuits via waving uh, your hands around. 
You can make your own stadiums by taking a photo of something, and that matches the terrain. And you can straight up drive the car in in races that looked pretty decent. Yeah, I mean, they look obviously reminiscent of a Mario Kart stage. Like, that, I think that's mm-hmm. pretty clear. Uh, you can add, like speed boost there's no items necessarily but i thought that was cool when creating your own uh, little tracks you're going to be able to dictate when the the speeds are going to be so if you get a speed boost and then they do like a super sharp turn i'm pretty sure you control people with that (laughs) but yeah this is like the obvious like big one this is the one where there's probably the most value you can i'm assuming play multiplayer with your friends right i don't think i don't that was going to be my next thing. I don't know or think that there's multiplayer. There's no insinuation. Okay, yeah. Um, I mean, here's here's the tricky thing. Uh, we'll get to the robot in a little bit, but that definitely encouraged two kits. The RC car is multiplayer with one kit. You get two little little bugs. I don't know that you can like line up your motorbikes next to each other. Maybe you can and we've missed it. That would be super awesome, but I... I, I I think it looks like a solo affair, and that's where I was disappointed because I was hoping that you would be able to, hey, grab another Joy-Con even and just like race along the track. Like, hey, I created this track. I want you to check it out. I want you to race it. That would be super cool. Um, I do wonder if that lays the groundwork, though, for an eventual Mario Kart maker or or something of the sort. You know, they're kind of putting into to, to practice a little bit of that that foundation there. Yeah. Good point. I mean, we still don't know who makes that, but Nintendo refuses to comment on it, <laughs> but it's possible. I really think that one looks fun. I could get a kick out of that. You know, racing against AI um, is nowhere near as exciting as other people, but being able to make your own circuits, I, I do wonder with all of these, and, and most specifically the robot, but same with this, like, okay, they say you can wave the little mini bike in the air to create the circuit. Like, how accurate is that going to be? How one-to-one? How direct? Is there any delay? Um, are you going to feel like you have full control or is it frustrating? Because I sure as heck don't want to feel like we're back a decade, you know, with with beginner style motion control. I hope that these things operate and work at a, at a higher level. And, and what we've seen read from press seem to indicate that they do. Um, but you know, we'll wait for the retail version in our own home to pass final judgment. Piano Gabe, though, you want to make music. This one looks to be the most, you know, outside of the garage, which is very much teaching like baseline coding, baseline engineering. This one looks to be the most educational. You can't just mess around with the piano, make cat sounds, make choral sounds. Uh, but when you get into that studio, making your own beats, making your own songs, conducting, waveforming, rhythm cards, there's a lot there. I love music. I love rhythm. Uh, you know this about me. You also forgot to mention the grandpa sounds, which is very important. I oh. don't know why you decided to omit that. But yeah, piano is probably the one that I'm looking forward to the most. Yeah, the yeah. the... The bike ones are probably cooler, but I can see myself spending more time with this music, especially, like, I want to see how me cutting a different, like, waveform is going to, like, work on these, like, piano riffs. I want to get, like, the sound I want. And you saw that you can make some, like, very, very intricate music with this. Yeah, I I was impressed by this one. Um, I think it, of all the games, this one probably appeals to the widest range of of ages you've got like you said you know let's make grandpa sounds Uh, a four-year-old could do that but then if you want to be more in-depth and and cut these waveform cards and try to make unique sounds i don't know if there's any saving sharing or how that all works but it seemed pretty darn cool um and and to me you know this is why toy con uh, variety pack has overtaken the robot pack for me I, i found i found initially that i was more pumped in prime for for the robots but at eighty dollars i'm worried about the robots as opposed to this variety pack that seems to offer i mean obviously far more variety but more depth even yeah that there's just a lot more here and some of the the variety pack ones there is no death to the rc car yeah. probably into the fishing and even house but you know the two big except ones. that except that the RC, rc car mechanic and idea yeah. can be implemented via the garage which doesn't sure. seem to be the case in 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 the robot kit let's move on to the robot kit a little bit um they showcase that there are multiple modes there are challenges um you can change up the colors they showed all the moves you know it's a pretty cool setup with the visor uh with the feet with the arms you can fire blast you can go tank mode um, you can even go versus if you have two of these kits. 
I'm worried about that everything I saw had a five minute timer, Gabe. That that just bugs the heck out of me for some reason. Yeah, if there is indeed a five like minute timer on on everything, that's gonna be a little unfortunate. But it makes sense because you're like chasing high scores. You have to have a limit, right? It's not gonna let you just go forever. Uh, but, but if uh, there should be an exploratory mode, unless it's that the, the system can't handle that much chaos, that okay, they you know you're destroying this. I don't know how instantly everything refreshes or what, but I don't know why in just like the robot mode, why that's not. I don't know. I, I expect there to be more of a campaign. Well, and I don't see that at all. Well, no, we don't have a campaign, but what we do have is these challenges where you have like very specific rooms that you have to do specific activities in order to clear them. So not quite a campaign, but that's pretty much what I expected. I didn't think that there was going to be like a story or anything like that. That 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 was never my expectations. Um, but the fact that we do have these like challenge rooms and different modes, I, I think we're going to be okay. I feel like Nintendo wanted to target, like we said, like more of the thinking tinkerer. Uh, type kid with the variety pack and then the robot is just more of like i don't know, like the traditional kid like hey let's just go be a big robot because that seems fun looks fun and the experiences of it is what's going to carry this pack um I, I think the versus mode looks interesting it's hard to tell how much depth there is there and again with this one i do wonder you know they show like okay when you step the robot will step when you you know rotate the robot will rotate how one-to-one is that how in you know how is there a delay are we are we getting real instantaneous feedback or is it going to feel a little awkward if i don't take a high enough step it doesn't recognize if i don't take a a slow enough step i'm off pace i'm very curious to see how the robot actually feels when you're in the suit rather than just watching someone else which does look pretty cool yeah um toy con um robot like being able to change colors, things like that. Like, does that do anything for you? Just customizing your robot and making them unique because you can change the color of, like, every part of the robot. So you can have a rainbow robot if you want. So, but besides that, you have the calories, though, that I wanted to ask you about. Like, what do you think that is? Where you just, like, got to, like, go, like, faster or something? I mean, obviously, it indicates burning calories, which is a little bit more health-based. Or or is there anything to think about that? Could be interesting. To touch on your first point, um, I think the customization of the variety pack is far more exciting than just changing the color in-game. I noticed that they, they really were talking extra parts. Um, you know, the waveform, the the rhythm cards, even changing the look of the RC. They, they mentioned that they include multiple different pieces that you can put on there. You can obviously build your own pieces with the garage. They encourage you to kind of create your own thing. We saw that Nintendo Japan is going to be releasing uh, some Nintendo-branded masking tape with bullet bills and mushrooms and different things. No announcement of that. Uh, stateside, I'm guessing it won't come here in the same way that we didn't get uh, as many face plates or things like that. It just seems like more of those uh, smaller accessories appeal appeal over there more. Um, but they do want you to mess around with this, and they want you to color it, and they want you to, to design and tape. And they even mentioned an odd thing about, hey, breaking it is part of the fun because then you can make your own repairs, and it, it creates a more unique you experience, which I think is a a real, real fun way to spin that. Um, but robot doesn't seem as much about that. Robot seems much more about, like I said, doing action activity, and maybe that's where calories comes in. Is you know, hey, how fast can you punch down all these towers, or or how how far can you walk the robot in thirty seconds? Stuff like that could be cool. Yeah, well, we'll have to see. But you know, overall, I have to say I am like pretty impressed with this stuff. It, it both packs. Yeah, I honestly don't mind the robot one either. Not as much as you do. Like, I don't know how many challenges there are, and I don't know, like, the depth of them, but I think they're both cool in their own unique ways. They're different enough that, you know, they offer something to a completely different type of person. If you're way more creative and you're way more about, like, education and you want to, like, learn how to do these things, go get the the variety pack. If you want to just, like, play more of a game and you're more into just, like, hey, have fun and don't worry about, like, learning as much... Go play with the with the robot, right? Like it, it offers something different. It would be nice if they were included in the same pack, but that is going to cost you one hundred and fifty dollars if you want to experience both of them. And I do wonder if that if that limits things here. I think if these were forty dollar packs, they they may do far better. So I'm curious to see how they sell at seventy and eighty dollars, especially that robot. It's one activity. I know that there are multiple modes. And I know it's really cool, and putting on that suit looks awesome. Uh, and you know, dropping the visor, firing the beam, really is kind of like wish fulfillment, fantasy fulfillment. 
probably for a lot of people, kids and adults alike. But I, I feel like it's it's odd when you have a, a single activity that's eighty dollars the few modes that are apparently all timed, and then you know the the variety pack with the garage and with everything. Do we think there's any sort of garage in in robot? Is there is there any sort of like hey modify these parts or modify these pieces to make something different or no? You think that they would have shown it because if you notice garage is not on the main screen yeah. um of Toycon variety pack. Yeah, I, I I don't I don't know the garage is in there. I think hangar kind of takes the place of that because that's where you're like doing like the color modifications right. and things. So I mean maybe there but I I don't think so as far as like different like weapons and and like armor pieces if that's what you're thinking then no i don't think so no okay that makes sense and, and that's probably where i'd go um i think i'm a little nervous about price after seeing these trailers i am far more impressed uh with the variety pack that has definitely won me over um and i i flipped to be now jones in for for that particular package versus the robot all in all though you sound like you're far more positive as more information uh, has been revealed and that's a good thing you know, the idea of this was what was exciting, but now that we're getting more granular specifics, more enthusiasm shows that Nintendo knows what's up. And I think the press feedback um, reinforces that because they've played it and they seem to feel even even more strongly. Um, I'm, I'm still skeptical long term. I wonder if any of the activities do hold lasting power and that robot kit worries me at 80 uh, but I am really excited to check this out, and I definitely will be picking up Variety Pack for sure, if for nothing else, uh, than to make those grandpa sounds. That's yes. who, who who could want more? Um, or to, to play pranks on the weird cat elephant in the house <laughs> and to try to prove myself that I can cut a waveform card. In the meantime, though, let us know your take on Labo and these three videos. You've seen them all now if you've been watching, um, and you can tell us in the comments down below what you think? Are you more excited, less excited, more worried, less worried? Which pack has won you over or have none of them won you over? What do you think about Labo now that we know a whole lot more? Thanks so much for watching and listening to this discussion. If you enjoyed, go follow us on Twitter, twitter.com slash the switch for us. We talk about other stuff there and we respond to a lot of your questions and your thoughts. Make sure to comment. You might be included in comment for us or you might just start an interesting discussion with some of our other awesome community members. Thank you for being a part of this. We love you. Until next time, for myself and Gabe, Switch Force, out.